a little bit about myself, uh, a little prologue. So I'm a poet and an aspiring writer, and I'm very interested in the science of storytelling and also the writing guide as such. So um, I, I thank um, Hassan Bogana for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about my view and how I see the novel and what I think about how a novel is best read. So these are my personal views and obviously I've done some research on, you know, there are many how-to books, so how to read a novel. I believe there's already a title, a book out there that you can purchase that uh, talks about the technicalities. Um, but um, this lecture is primarily about me sharing my view on, on the subject and sharing with readers um, such as yourselves who are really keen on, you know, um, getting into novel writing and also novel reading. So, um, right. I'm going to start my uh, little presentation here by uh, dividing my speech into three sections. So the first section will be uh, looking at the novel from a cultural angle. The second part will be about the organizational work. So uh, when you when you read a novel, obviously you just don't pick up a novel and you know start reading without knowing what the contents of the novel are, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go into the details of the organizational aspect. And the last part of my lecture will be about the mental work that is required of a reader uh, to, to fully grasp the novel, which is, a, which is a product of, you know, a form of art. So to, to, um, to answer maybe some of your thoughts on why I would start this um, little speech or this presentation about the cultural dimension uh, just to reinforce or remind you guys, a culture is composed of the ideas, the customs, and the social behavior of a society. So, and part of this is the artistic uh, production of intellectual work. And this is why uh, a novel is actually part of culture. And um, just to reinforce this view, I wanted to, to kind of present this little book to you guys, Culture and Imperialism by Edward Said, where he extensively talks about the novel as, you know, one of the central components of imperialism, how it shaped attitudes and uh, thought patterns of people in the Western Hemisphere, about the people that are living in the so-called third world. So um, this is why it's, it's really important to understand uh, culture as something, you know, the attitude that a people approach books and, and literature from. So as Somalis, I thought writing this presentation down and structuring my thoughts, I thought about as Somalis, what is our view about the novel? How do we regard the novel? Or in Somali, Shekofanet, which is uh, a part of Fanka, or you could say Sugan, which is a part of Fanka, uh, which is the literature, uh, the literature product of uh, a society's thought. Uh, and, um, you know, ideas. So as Somalis, one of the attitudes that I've come across time and time again is this thought of, you know, utilitarianism, the idea of that, you know, a book or reading should encompass an element of learning, an element of deriving utility, gaining something from it. So as Somalis, we always think about when you read books, you hear the words, knowledge is power. I'm sure all of you uh, have come across individuals who are really, really skeptical about reading novels, which are works of fiction. So if you look at the definition of a novel, it is a piece of literature. It is a book, a work, a story that is fictional in its nature. And of course, there are different types of novels. There's the romance novel. There's the science fiction novel. There's the historical novel, the crime novel. Um, and there's all, all, all obviously the, um, the kind of educational novel, which is uh, called, you know, coming of age stories. Uh, in German, it's called Bildungsroman. It's also used in the English language. So if you look at, you know, the types of novels, you, you'll come across this word Bildungsroman, which has like a, 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 an educational character. So there are many different types of novels and, and Unfortunately, um, a lot of our people, they don't really understand the value of the novel and they don't, they just regard it as, you know, a waste of time, you know, it's just something that people do 
to waste time or to, to pass their time. But um, I want to convince you in this presentation as, some, as someone who reads novels and as someone who appreciates the, the artistic work that is behind novels, that um, these are, I would say, misconceptions that all people have. Uh, obviously, you can, you can say our culture is, is a lot about, you know, achievement, competitiveness, karti, you know, having the, the right approach to life. And part of that is being practical, reading things that could benefit you in your dunya and in your akhirah, in this world and in the hereafter. And that's the form of book that you read. That's the type of knowledge that you consume. So um, I want you to, I want you to uh, be aware of the fact that, you know, you can't just brush or you can't just categorize all novels as being time ways. They're different types of novels. You need to be aware of these categories. You need to be aware of what these different types of novels are and why people read them and which type of novel you yourself as an individual feel drawn to. I personally uh, really enjoy historical novels because I'm into history. I, I, I always love to understand historical connections, love to understand the present from the lens of the past. So that's, it could be a fictional story, but this fictional story carries a lot of elements of reality. It has an element of realism because it deals with a topic with events that may have transpired in reality, but this writer is using historical fiction to craft a story, to create a narrative that basically imparts or you know, conveys the, the spirit of that time, of, the, of that history. So me personally, I'm into historical novels, but also educational coming of age novels. And you know, these coming of age novels, they, they basically are about an individual, a character that undergoes a journey of development, of psychological and moral growth, where this person, for example, somebody who from a young age is followed until they are grown and they experience a lot of obstacles and these obstacles make this individual grow as a character and develop into a, an adult and basically uh, imparts a lot of wisdom from, from the sense of you may recognize yourself in these, you know, in these uh, coming of age novels. You may learn a few things about certain places, the setting where the story is set, and you know um, what these characters' background is, their culture. It, it also teaches you a lot of empathy. So, so the novel, in my view, is is a lot about recreating reality, creating fictional worlds, imaginary worlds. But quite often, these imaginary worlds have you know an anchor or a connection to reality, and they're rooted in stories that the the writer may have witnessed or heard about themselves. An example of this uh, that, uh, you know, you may be able to relate to is uh, Nadifa Muhammad's uh, histo history novel or, or her the story of her father, which is the Black Mamba Boy. Uh, it is rooted in a, in a true story of, of Somali sailors, uh, her father being one of them who undergoes a journey from his, uh, you know, childhood in Yemen all the way to him discovering the world and traveling. So that's an example of a novel, which is an amazing novel, and, and I recommend you to read it. So that uh, is the, the kind of cultural element that we as Somalis really need to understand that the, the novel is not just malayani, it's not just a waste of time, it's not just you learning some fictional story that has no benefit for your dunya or akhira. Uh, it is quite the, the opposite. I have uh, made the experience that people who read a lot of novels, who have read novels from, from their from an early age, tend to have more emotional intelligence. They tend to be more refined characters because they have, you know, absorbed so many imaginary worlds in the fiction. And to borrow a phrase from a, a famous writer of fiction, uh, Stephen King, that he uses in his autobiography on writing, he uses the phrase digging fossils. So he, he says in, in his uh, little uh, exposition on, on writing, he says that writing fiction is, is finding truth in the lie. So fiction is, of course, a lie. It is a made up story. That's why it's called novel. But uh, there is a layer of truth in it. And it's all about making the novel as real as possible, because novels are essentially stories. And stories are about human beings, about people, about characters, 
their flaws and their strengths and the journey they undergo uh, to become to become the, the human beings they eventually become and, and what we can learn from this. And of course, storytelling has ancient roots. Uh, you know, societies all over the world have a uh, history and tradition of storytelling. And many a time it is a myth. It's a, it's a form of, you know, a, a form of fiction. It's a mythology, but it, or maybe a founding myth about the, the nation, about the tribe, about the, the place itself. But it imparts some of the character and it, it kind of explains some of the, the cultural baggage of these people. And you, can, you may be able to learn something about these people. So that's the, the uh, addressing the element of, of the culture that we as Somalis need to, you know, shake off this uh, false notion that novels are malayani. And you as the reader can decide which type of novel you want to read. Are you into history? Are you into uh, crime dramas? Are you into, um, you know, are you into... Um, coming of age stories of a particular place to understand a particular character or a particular society. So that is, is, is I think, very, very important that we, we need to evolve in our thinking about the novel. Of course, you know, some novels are better than other novels and, and some novels have, may, you know, conflict with our culture, our society, you know, as uh, Edward Said says in his book, you know, the novel is culture itself. It's, it's, it's an element, it's a, it's, a, it's a very important element of a culture of a people. And of course, if you read a book from, I don't know, from France, it, it's going to be a very different novel than if you were to read a, a story that was set in Egypt or, or in Turkey. Because the culture is different, the people's habits are different, the characters are, are, are very different. So uh, I think it's, it's quite important for us as a people to understand we, we decide which novel we want to read. We decide which avenue we pursue and where we draw our benefits. So if you, are, if you have this attitude, if you have this uh, utilitarian attitude of uh, I need to benefit or I need to gain something from a novel, then you, there are places where you can find that. So that is, I would say, the cultural dimension or the attitudinal dimension of a novel and how to read a novel uh, to understand that every no novel carries a cultural baggage it talks about a certain people, it talks about a certain society, and for that matter, it has a certain character. And you need to be aware of this before you read the book. And this brings us to the organizational aspect that I'm going to talk about uh, for, for a little while, which is all about, you know, before you purchase a, a novel, or before you read a novel, or you, you seem to be interested in a novel, uh, you, you want to get your hands on it, you see a title in the library somewhere, you think this sounds really interesting. Um, my personal experience is that it's very important for you as the reader to do some background research, to, to look into, you know, what is this author about? What kind of stories have they written in the past? Who are they? Which category does this novel fall under? It, it, there are so many different websites that, that contain uh, amazing reviews about books where you can get a gist of, of how people perceive how the, 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 you know, the world basically received this novel and you can get a sense of uh, what this novel is about. For example, I have recently uh, bought this novel uh, by a Somali author called The Youth of God. And um, I, I actually attended the, uh, a, a little you know, reading of, of the book by the author himself in an event that was uh, set up for him to promote his novel when it came out. So it, it, is, it is something that kind of really interested me from the get-go, the title, The Youth of God. I knew it was about religion. I knew it was about, it had to do with terrorism because if we Somalis talk about religion, it's always about, the, there's always this angle of, of extremism. There's this angle of, you know, religion is associated with violence. Unfortunately, due to the events uh, all across the Horn of Africa, the terrorism that our people are suffering from, ever since the government uh, collapsed 30 odd years ago. So um, it's, it's very important to do some background research. So uh, before I read the book, I, I actually did a, did a bit of research on the author. I found out that he's a journalist, that he, you know, he was personally affected by this, this issue in, in his environment that a lot of young Somalis went back home or, or back to their, their ancestral lands to you know, join terrorist organizations. And, and he was really upset about this and, and he wanted to make sense of this. So for him, it was 
a journey of fact finding, a journey of trying to make sense of this really numbing and, and painful you know, phenomenon of, of young people who have all their lives ahead of them, who have the potential to, to have amazing futures, decide to you know, cut everything off and disappoint their parents and just vanish into another world to, to cause and inflict harm upon other people. So knowing that and understanding that, that his book uh, came from a place of concern, that his book came from a place of, you know, it, 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 was, it, it was addressing a need that immediately made me view the book in a different light. So when I started reading the pages, I, I, I was a lot more relaxed uh, from, from the sense of, you know, as, as Muslims, as Somalis, we, we don't really like to, to hear uh, this, this stereotype all the time. Somalis are just violent extremists and, and blow themselves up. And, you know, religion is always portrayed in a bad light. So I wanted to, to basically assure myself that this is not just another guy bashing, um, you know, Islam and bashing religious youth. So it was very important to read some reviews, look online, see what other people thought of the novel. And uh, you, will, you will often notice, you know, that uh, the reviews give you a hint. People speak about the elements that touch them, the, the parts that they really enjoyed and liked. And that will give you a sense of, is this novel for me or is it not for me? And that's the first, I would say, the organizational bit. The first step before you read a novel is to, to ascertain, is this for me or not for me? Unless you want to obviously experiment, you want to find out, is uh, you want to read something new, you want to expand your horizon and understand something that you didn't understand before. So another point of, of the organizational element that I'd like to address is, it is very, very uh, a, a good habit, I would say, to be in a reading group. So to, to read novels, not just for yourself alone, but also with your, with your family, with your siblings, or, or maybe with your friends to meet up in a library. I, I really uh, love this element or this new trend um, that I'm witnessing uh, across the world of, uh, you know, not only for diaspora and Somalis, but also for Somalis back home, there's this increased uh, love of reading. So more and more people are, there's the, almost a boom of, of people, people wanting to get into reading and writing it as well. So it's, it's amazing to see young people get together in a library and, and read a novel together. Uh, and if you, if you, if you actually read the, the biographies of great writers, one element that I noticed was that they were in reading groups from a very young age. For example, Stephen King, he, he had a little family reading group uh, as, a, as a child and they read novels together. So that will spark the thought that will, that will make children and, and young people more emotionally intelligent, more aware of, of you know, behavioral uh, peculiarities. You know, when you read the novels, they're very descriptive. They, they are works of art. You see somebody's eyes, uh, uh, you know, change in a certain way of their forehead or you know certain parts of their face get wrinkles and they look angry they look happy they look interested they look intrigued and there's a lot of this element of description that will that will make children and young people aware of uh, of, of of gestures of of, of uh, the the language of the body because that's that's a very important element of intelligence actually to be able to read uh, a person's body language to be able to ascertain or, or get a gist of what this person is about. So that it kind of fosters or, or, or nurtures this, this uh, awareness, this increased or, or heightened awareness about uh, body language in, in young people. And, and even if you're, if, you're, I mean, if you're a grown up person and you read about these things, you notice more. I, I mean, it certainly happens with me when I'm in the train or I just see a particular act or a person, you know, forgetting to put back their glasses and the glasses hang on the nose and, and you just think the person's really into whatever they're reading or whatever they're watching on their phone. They, they kind of, they're not aware the, of the fact that their, their glasses are about to fall on the floor. So these little things make you, uh, I would say, enrich you as a human being if you, if you are more aware of your surroundings, if you are more aware of of, of uh, the, the nature of the human being itself. I mean, if you, are ex if you exclude this intellectual way of describing the, the lives of human beings, uh, you know, which you, which, you, which you don't get in that way in, in non-fiction works that are about, uh, I don't know, about sociology and uh, psychology, maybe you'll get the, some of the description element, but novels are unique in that sense that they are works of art that reproduce reality. They reproduce our lived experience as human beings, and they are a great source of, of, of imagination. 
So enriching your imagination. And um, this is also one of the, the kind of recommendations that I have as a person um, to join reading groups, to join uh, uh, groups that, that read novels together and exchange thoughts and, and, and to foster this culture of, of reading novels. I mean, our ancestors, they, they used to sit around a bonfire at night and they used to exchange mahma proverbs. They used to exchange gawai poetry. They used to exchange these cultural things and they were orally transmitted to reach us today. And, and we have works of, uh, you know, Raga Ugas, for example, um, poetry that, that, was, that was orally transmitted three, 400 years ago. And it's still with us because of this element of sharing. So reading novels in, in groups, I believe would, would definitely enrich all of you and including myself. So, so that's another organizational uh, layer of, of how to read a novel that would definitely enrich or make your reading more in depth and, and, and more intense and, 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 and a more enriching experience. So continuing on, on this line of thought of uh, looking at the elements of the outer elements, of course, it's, it's very important for you to be not distracted. Nowadays, we kind of are very focused on our phones. We tend to, uh, you know, be uh, easily distracted. Our attention span is, is very low. So my advice on this is, is it is very important when I read a book, I tend to switch off my phone, put it on silent, just, you know, throw it away in a corner and I, I don't look at it for, for that one hour. And it's amazing. It's, 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 it's kind of soothing as well when you, when you've blocked out the whole world and for one hour you are consumed in this literary world. You literally enter another zone and you absorb the intensity of the zone and, and it, it, it definitely takes you on a journey of sorts. So it's very important uh, organizationally to block out distractions and to, to not listen to things that may distract you. Um, so that's that. Uh, moving forward, continuing on the, the, the now the actual reading bit, so the mental work. Reading is, is, is a mental exercise. It is, you're, you're consuming words in written form. So it is very important to, to understand that it is an intellectual endeavor that you need to, um, before, you, before you read a novel, that you need to ask yourself some basic questions or, or as you go as well, whilst reading the novel, you ask yourself about the narrator, who's the narrator? Is it a, an individual who's part of the story? Um, you know, by narrator, I mean the person who's, 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 who's telling the story. Every story is told in a particular voice. So it is, is it first person? It, is it a novel that is, that is, re, that is uh, told by the, by the main character, by the protagonist or in, in Somali, the protagonist would, uh, you know, would mean, um, you know, uh, it's the story that uh, the, the, the protagonist is the key person. He is the, the, or he or she, the story is about them. So is, is the narrator, the, the, the protagonist, or is the narrator a, a third person that is not part of the story? Do they know everything? Are they, are they aware of everything? Or are they telling a story from a particular perspective so understanding how the story is told will will definitely enrich the, the reading as you go along you will understand and grasp the contents of the novel a lot more if you are aware of how the what kind of novel is it is it written in the first person i have done thing a b z uh it all began as a mistake i was uh, on one summer day i was sitting in this park and something happened and it's the person it's the first person it's the I that is narrating the story, or is it somebody else? That's, that's very important, I would say, to understand mentally who's telling you the story. You also need to be aware about the quest, Rabitanka, uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the main character. What does this character want? Is it a story about finding something? Is it a story about a journey? Is it a story about loss? You need to be aware of the one so that you understand the, the plot. You know, there's a, there's a story, there's a, there's, a, there's a narrative that weaves through the novel and to, to understand the quest is very, very important. So for example, going back to Nadeefa Mohammed's novel, uh, Black Mamba Boy, as I was reading at the beginning, I realized, I, of course I did some research, background research. It was about her father who was a sailor. So in the beginning, he was talking about or, or, or the, the voice was talking about the father a lot and how the mother was coping with the absence of his father. And so it was a story of quest. It was a search. It was, uh, it was a search of something that was missing. 
So I knew this from, from reading the first few pages. So it's very important to understand the quest of the main character and the setting as well to, to, to really uh, grasp the contents of, of, of the story. It's part of the mental work. So yeah, um, and, and to, to build on top of the, the mental work as you, as you read the novels, it is also a very good habit to kind of summarize the main events of every chapter as you go along um, to, to anticipate or, or to think about what may happen in the next chapter. This really, really makes the, the reading a lot more intense where you, you kind of become consumed or literally follow the character step by step as they uh, pursue their journey. You understand how things unfold and you make connections between events and, uh, that happen across chapters. So um, are the characters changing? Um, you know, is the story more about a plot? Is it very uh, A happened, B happened? So there's a plot is like there's a chronological or there's, there's, there's a sequence of events. Things that are happening one by one and that's plot. Uh, it's, it's very heavy or on the mind to, to go through a plot. It's, it's kind of, it, 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 quite often it feels artificial. The story feels very artificial. The best stories from my point of view are the stories that are about individuals where, where the emphasis is more on the character, on the development, on how they change as things happen to them, as opposed to a plot, a, a very, very much mechanical uh, crafting of a story. So some stories are more about characters, some stories are more about plot, and some try to find a balance between them. So as you read, it's, it's, it's something that I do quite naturally. I try to understand, is this a plot, heavy plot-laden story, or is it more about characters? And it is also very important to look for symbolism. To look, you know, a symbolism is um, a, an object, something, the, the quest, for example, in the story of, of Nadeef and Muhammad's father, the quest is... Initially, it's the father that he's looking for. And later on, it turns into the idea of finding oneself, finding something. So, so it, it, it stand, that's symbolism. Symbolism is uh, something, an item or a person that is reappearing in the story and they fulfill something greater. They, and quite often you realize the symbolism at the end of, the, of reading the novel. You, at the end, you realize what was, that, what was that symbol about? And you do some research maybe, and then you figure out oh, this was meaning this, you know, symbolism is, it's not exactly that thing, but it stands for an idea that is greater. So there's a greater idea behind a particular item, behind a particular object, behind a particular quest or a person. So it is very important to look for symbolism. I personally really love symbolism and I try to uh, build in symbolism or to uncover the symbolism in stories in my own writing. So this is something I, I, I highly recommend um, young people and everyone for that matter to, to look for symbolism, to, to see what, what is the story telling me? What is this story about? And um, so, so that's, that's another very important, um, you know, point uh, in, in the, the mental work. And at the end of, of reading the novel, I would say it is also very useful to reconsider the novel as a whole. Sometimes I reread chapters and reevaluate and, and look at the notes. I'm, I'm quite obsessed about taking knowledge from, from novels, taking, you know, uh, taking, for example, uh, this is a novel by a, an author called Hermann Hesse, who actually won the Nobel Prize for this book, uh, the, Der Steppenwolf, The Steppenwolf. Um, it, it, is, it is a work about this uh, mentally ill person. It's about a person that is mentally ill, a, a middle-aged man, who's undergoing a journey of sorts. He's, he's trying to find something that is lost. So it's a, it's, a, it's a story about loss. It's a story about movement. So the symbolism that is in the book is, is very powerful and very strong. And as I was reading, I was making a lot of notes and, and I learned a lot from the novel uh, because it is, it, is, it is quite powerful in the sense that it is so, it is timeless. Like the, the actual story, the symbolism after doing some research um, I, I figured it was about um, the, the, this, 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 what we experience as a people when we transition from one phase to another. So the, in the story, uh, the setting is about a Germany that used to be very rural. It used to be very, uh, you know, it wasn't urbanized. And then there came this massive urbanization, the factories uh, propping up, people moving to the cities. 
and there was this element of losing something. The people felt at loss. They, they couldn't adapt to this new world, this new urban environment. And so there was a crisis of identity in a way. And um, this crisis of identity was standing for something that we, as, we, as time changes us, as things happen and, and our environments change, we, we, need to, we, need to, we need to be aware of the fact that we lose things as well. We lose, we lose the symbolism that we, that we cherish. And, and it is quite powerful as a theme to, to, to think about, uh, especially for us Somalis, uh, you know, with the breakdown of our government and the people dispersing all over the world, this, this loss of, of, of some sorts, this loss of what we used to cherish, the, the good old days and, and how things are different today. So I think uh, I personally learned uh, a lot to, to, to look for this, how, 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 how did this particular uh, loss affect me as an individual, how this sense of belonging that I'm looking for, this sense of detachment or, or, or not really fitting in anywhere, how does this affect my uh, psyche, my psychology as a person, and how can I enrich my life with a, with a memory of what I have lost? So that is, that is very important to reappreciate a novel after you have read it, to, to really grasp and understand what did this novel add to me. So, so me personally, I, I really love novels that leave something behind, that, that I remember, that, that gave me something, that you know, enriched me in a way, uh, improved my, my thoughts on a certain matter, on, on something, and made me more aware, I would say. That's, that's the most important element, uh, the, the most important joy that I have from a novel. It's not only entertaining, it's not only really arresting your mind and taking your mind on a journey it is something that shapes your character really so that's the that's the the last point that i would like to end this uh, little presentation the, the the mental work that is required for reading a novel and, and which sometimes also involves physical work making notes reappreciating reevaluating and so yeah thank you very much for for giving me this platform and, and for, for for your time